you you know, I mean, I'm not saying that Goose ain't he he will fight if something you know bows up on him. He would, but he's not. I, I, I mean, there was a time when I, and, and Crow was the same way. Crow didn't care to fight. There was a time when I was leaving a hall band late, and I'm loading dogs, and my old lady's loading dogs, and we're sitting around, and the next thing you know, I get back to the house, and I open the box, and I'm like, what goose? And everybody's, like, like, I'm freaking out. I'm like, where's my dog? Where's goose? Where's goose? You know, and then, uh, of course, he was accidentally loaded with crow, and them two dogs were just cuddled up, laid up. <laughs> it's just a, like nobody. Like oh. normally, most of these dogs are are they they do will get a little, especially when you put two alphas together. Yeah, you would think for it'd be disastrous, but and them dogs were so confident in what they did, they didn't. Well, they didn't care about that. Th- them dogs knew each other well too because they grew up. They living at the same spot, but. Do y'all have? But a, they weren't raised together. I mean, Crow came. I didn't get Crow till he was about an eight-year-old dog. I didn't raise Crow. I bought him. He was about eight, seven, eight years old. And Goose, I raised from a puppy. But uh, I mean, you know, I don't. Th- I really don't think that had anything to do with it. I feel like those two dogs were just, just adamantly confident, and they didn't feel the need to do all that. But but is it a uh, is it a problem with most? dogs because it it is more of a a alpha male or i I guess it could be alpha female but i I mean i think i think majority speaking you're probably like if you go out and and, and, i think that's going to be a harder trick to find out when they're puppies so you're not going to be able to go out and pick out a puppy (laughs) you know that's you know i mean more than more times than most it's the one knocking the dog off the food bowl yeah he's probably going to be better but i don't think you're ever going to get great out of that like like great greats the great worst enemy is good. Yeah. There's, well, a, there's a lot of good dogs, well, but, but there's there are very few great ones. I guess where I was going with that is, is if you're standing there, I guess with dogs on the lead next to each other, I don't know how y'all station like on deck or whoever's finna go in the pen. If y'all are all just standing there with your dogs on the lead, but is it ever a situation to where you get two dogs that's finna go in here and fight a hog, man, it probably ain't that, and a 60 pound dog next to him is not near as scary as trying to fight a 300 pound hog. You'll have a problem with some alpha males trying to tangle, tangle up with each other. Yeah, we've got, we've got, I mean, we've had a few, it's not a, it's not a real common thing, but we, it's not like, I mean, with anything you do, you know, each year we probably have over 13,000 runs. We probably have less than five where we have a problem with the dog. Yeah. Jump another dog. after, And it's, and, and it's always after the runs over, you know, the yep. hog goes out, and the, now the next thing you know, the two dogs are in the pen together, and they're they're kind of they may go to checking each other out. One bows up, the other one don't back down, and the next thing you know, you got a fight on your hands. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it, it does happen. It's, very, it's not a not a common thing, but it. I mean, you okay. know, we're not sta- we're not we're not out there staging dogs to fight. It, it, yeah, sometimes. Well, you know, I mean, yeah. you, you put a room full of MMA fighters in a room together. At yeah. first, it might be cordial, but in a few minutes, yeah. it's probably not going to be because yeah. somebody's going to want to see yeah, who the somebody. baddest person is in the room. Yeah, especially if there's alcohol involved. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, I got so many questions. Al- uh, alcohol, alcohol, and women. Uh, well, yeah, and if you get all right, so, is there a bunch of people running females in these, or is it mostly male sport? Oh uh, no, I mean we got. I mean, I, I think I would say majority are male. Because the, the and only and really the only reason it's not that the females don't perform, it's that if you run a series under points, you're not going to make it all year long without that jip coming in heat and ruining your plans. You know? Yeah, I get it. <laughs> you know those those kind of things are really the only thing I think that that divide, I mean we don't we have not had a female. I, I take that back. We have had one female world champion in the ABDR, but we've never had a female win the Showtime series, the the big series. You know, uh, it just, it's because of, and, and, you know, you got to, you know, it's hard for a female to be dominant, like a, like a good one dog and a good two dog. Uh, that, and those are actually two things that we don't see very often either. Even if, even today, like we don't have in the, in the top five right now, the top five in the standings, there ain't but two dogs that have 
score points in one dog and two dog events. Most of these dogs either do one or the other. They either one dog or they two dog. Why is that? I, I think it's just because it's so difficult. You know, in order to get a good one, uh, in order to get a great one dog, he's almost borderline a catch dog with another partner. So, you know, like uh, now, now when they get <clears throat> up there in age, sometimes that helps them out in, into the two dog events because they're, you know, they start slowing down and you know, like Gorilla, you know, he was owned by Chan Culliver. Gorilla was has is, is been a great one dog for probably the last three or four years. Well, now that he's up there around eight, nine years old, he's starting to two dog now. Uh, he hasn't won anything in the two dog, but it's not that he's a bad dog. He's a, he's a really good dog even in the two dog. But he's, you know, it's 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 very hard to win. Yeah, people don't realize how hard it is to compete at the level that we're competing at. It, it, it's it's mind boggling. Like you, you can have the best in the world. Goose has been the best dog for four years. He don't. He, he's still batting about four hundred. You know, he wins about forty percent of the time of the events he's entered in. Well, and that's that's because I mean that's I mean you got a lot of things. It's kind of like like rodeo. You know, like when a when a guy draws a calf, that he might he might draw a bad calf and he don't win the rodeo that day. You know, yeah. I mean, he might be the best roper there is, but oh yeah, he draws he draws something that he that's just impossible, and those do happen. There are some of them hogs that are impossible to bait, you know, or, or you catch out on them or something like that may happen. But so when you line, when you, when you're choosing another dog to go with your dog in a two dog competition, is there certain things that you want that, like, are you matching poor, tra- if one dog has less of one absolutely. thing than another? Yeah, absolutely. That's probably the most important aspect of being. Uh, having a, having you know a good uh, having an opportunity to win is how you actually pair your dogs and i think the reason why uh goose has done as well as he has is because since he was 10 months old he had great partners you know to i i had great partners to put him with i mean he always he never got a bad look you know he didn't he didn't have to run with a second tier dog he was running with top tier dogs since he was 10 months old now this is going to be an ignorant question for the people that know this but like i said there's a lot of us that this is new to what what is something that one dog might be lacking of that another dog might you know well i'll give you a pretty good example if you watch the yellow black mouth cur that i bay with goose in the videos he is a soft dog he sits back, he stands out of the way, and he barks. He's just a point collector. Goose goes in there and takes control of the hog and really bays the hog. And it's not that you always want that because there's going to be rounds where you draw something really, really nasty and it really makes it hard on Goose. But you might have to, I mean, by sometimes by the time you get to that elimination round, you're already in the money, you know, so you pair that way, you're pairing that way to win, you know, more than anything, because if you pair two rough dogs or two lead dogs together, what you're going to have is you may get too rough early on, catch out. As the event goes, your dogs will kind of back up a little bit they kind of knock the rust you rock the rust off of them in the first few rounds and then over time they just kind of slow they back up they start respecting the hogs a little more and you got to run you know you pair i mean i i kind of change how i do it i'll run with cowboy and then i'll run with derail derail is more of a medium medium dog sometimes if goose gets hit or backed up derail will slide up there and take the lead as for cowboy never would if, if Goose gets hurt or not back, <laughs> he's just like, hey, man, <laughs> we both came in here the same. You should have done what I've done. <laughs> <You know? laughs> he's going to leave. He, he'll leave you out the dry as to where the other dog, some dogs won't, and, you know. and But you also can – that can backfire on you too. Like I said, you can get too rough with a hog, and then you get deducted for being too rough. So right. you got to find that – got to find that happy medium, you know. Uh, and, it, and it's very difficult to do. Now, are y'all drawing hogs per group, 
or is it they send one hog out there for seven groups and then shuffle new hog in there for the next seven groups? No, they have a they have like a rotation. Uh, uh, like in Winfield, it'll be there'll be eight hogs in one rotation. So eat, you know, so they'll they'll run, they'll run like so each hog will get four runs. So eight times four is what's that? Twenty four. Yeah. Four thirty two something like. That. Anyways. They'll, they'll, like, they'll, I don't the know. Holder. You're making me do math, and I've got a bunch of other questions yeah. I'm trying to keep in my head. So, so don't hold us to it. So, eight times four, whatever. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, so you got you got. <laughs> bottom line is one hog is going to be in the pen four times, and then they then they change out that whole set of hogs, put in a new set of hogs, and then they run. So we have 150 in there. Yeah. So 32. They'll, they'll, have, they'll have they'll have three or four hog swaps to get through that 150 runs. Okay. And so, so it, the, 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 the effort is to not let one hog get overworked and you know, he, he'll, he'll go in the pen four times and then he goes to the back, cools off. They put pull water on them, keep them so to keep, to keep them fresh. So y'all run a run and then <clears throat> I guess every two dog team in the competition runs the run. And then I guess the most points y'all shuffle it down like that, or do y'all pair this two dog team against another two dog team and, into yeah, like a bracket. You, well, you now you you got you got you just got so the first round there might let's just say there's 150 dogs in the two dog competition. First round's got 150 dogs. Every dog is scored on a scale from one to ten. Ten being the best. If you make one mistake, you got a nine nine. You make two, you got a nine eight. You make three mistakes, you got a nine seven. So on and so forth. You're not gonna win. If you don't bay a ten in the first round, you're 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 completely out of it. <laughs> it's might as well get a zero. It doesn't matter. The, there's only two scores in the first round, really. It's perfect and not perfect. So you get a ten in the first round, and then they take all the tens in the first round. And they move them to the second round. We bay, then they move the time up. So it goes starts at two minutes, it goes to four minutes. So the second round will be four minutes, and we bay all them dogs. All the all those tens will go to the third round. Unless there was less than three, which there never is. So you're going to have 150 and about out of that 150, you're going to have about 35 to 40 come back for round two. After round two, you're going to have about 15 to 20. Well, usually about 15. Ne never, I don't think we've ever had 20 go into the six minute round, but somewhere around anywhere from eight to, to 12, we'll come back and you basically just in the third round and all the tens go to the fourth round and they bay for eight minutes usually by the time you get to the eight minute round you're in the money you i think maybe one or two times we've had seven or eight make it to the eight minute round <clears throat> you're gonna bay for eight minutes the highest scores you know if there's a tie at the end of that we'll bay for 10 minutes and well yeah, you just keep they keep adding time to you. That's until, ten until minutes you baying a hog is a that's a pretty good chunk of time. And pe people will say like I hear a wizard, oh, I'll leave mine. I've, I've had mine baited for freaking thirty minutes an hour. Blah blah blah. I promise you, in that thirty minutes an hour, he's messed up a bunch of people oh, being scored. <laughs> yeah. Well, and and if you got ten <laughs> dogs out there cat, or baying, yeah, two or three can take time off. Oh yeah, they'll walk. I've seen it happen many times. They'll walk off and lay down in a puddle while the other dogs are baying, and then they come back. You know, yeah. they cool off. Uh, it's a lot different. You know, they, these dogs got a. What we're asking out of these dogs is almost unnatural. I mean, it's it's not. You know, it's, it takes a very special dog to go eight minutes and bay a perfect score. Now you said most of the there. Was, you said some people hunt hounds and some people hunt. Curs. Is curs, a majority uh, a cur or is a majority or is it about split? In the pen, we're mostly cur dogs and mostly Catahoula. You have a few black mouse and you had a few hounds. Uh, and not many are successful. There's been like Rooster, for example, is one of the hounds that stands out. I mean, he was. Uh, he was, I mean, in my opinion, 
he is by far the baddest dog I've ever seen walk in there. I mean, I've, I've, I've I mean, as far as taking a, he's taking a licking and keeps on ticking. I mean, he's just one of those dogs that's, you know, you you got to be proud dog something like that. I yeah. Mean, Never, he never won a world champion. He's the, definitely the greatest dog that's never won a world championship. And that tells you just how hard it is to win one. When, when you call him a hound, <laughs> is that a walker? He, is that he a, was a blue tick. A he was a tick. straight up blue tick. Yeah. He was a blue tick. And uh, he's got some pup with some grandsons and some sons and some grandsons right now. Uh, he's owned by, He was owned by Code Red. And he's got, you know, he's got some, he's got some of his offspring on the ground and I actually ran with one of them in the in the draw run in that shootout, and we made it to the last round, and we caught. I mean, but he was a – I mean, we didn't make no mistakes. We just got – we got too rough, you know. Uh, he was a – he's a bad – they got they got a lot – they got – the future's bright for them. I mean, with – with uh, they, they've they've crossed him into some Catahoula, so they got some – they're – you know, they're, right now I think they're only like a quarter pound, and they're at three-quarter curve. So, you know, they'll ball a little bit and then they'll bark like a cur dog, you know, it's just, it's a, but that, you know, that got a, it, it, like I said, these are open competition, any breed. I don't care what it is. We got dogs in there competing that are, uh, Jag Terriers. Uh, uh, we got a dang, uh, what is that? Uh, what is that dang? Uh, Belgian Malawal competing, you know, one of them big, jag- one I, of them look, he does. It looks like a police dog. Oh yeah, it is. That's what it is. A big Belgian Malinois. And, uh, and he can, he does, he, he's placed a few times in like some old young events and stuff like that. I think he's placed out on the East coast and some big events, but, uh, he's a good dog. You know, you, I mean, he's a, he's an anomaly. He's the only one of his kind I, I've seen that's successful, but you know, he, you know, nevertheless, we got, I mean, it's open for any dog. Now, what 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 about the Catahoula? Do you think is the reason that everybody went to that? I mean, is there something that y'all seen in that breed of dogs that? Yeah, I mean, it's hundreds of years. The homework is done. Uh, you know, like um, Don Coggins, he owns that Blake dog, the Mal- Malinois, and uh, he's bound in the term. He's gonna he's gonna you know bring that line of dogs in, and and man. He, I think I'm not saying he ain't on to something, but I think he's got a, it's, it's years of, it's going to take several years of that before he can catch up to having the consistency we have in the cur dogs, you know, like this is the, our homework's been done for a hundred years. You know, we've, they've been watching these dogs, bay cattle, bay hogs and stuff in the woods. The Belgian melon wall has been, is a primarily a police dog, a drug dog. Yeah. You, trying to, you know, bringing that in and find and trying to find that consistency is going to be hard. I, he's got to, you know, but hey, Don's a super good guy and he's he's bright and he's if he's going to do it, he's going to be the only guy that can do that. You know, and that's what it, that's his goal. And that's hey, that's that's a that's a tall order. But uh, I think he's he's on to it. You know, he's he's definitely got I mean, he's he's surprised everybody thus far with a Belgian Malinois that's placed top three. I think even at Uncle Earl's. Well, now, know, it's, now most of the curves that the people on the, on this podcast that's listening, like a regional mountain curve, for instance, they're, they're pretty soft to humans. They're real game, uh, real tough mm-hmm. gamey wise, but is the Catahoula take correction well, or is, are they soft to humans also to correction, you know, as far as if it's golden? Yeah, I, man, I've. I've been, I haven't had any issues with any of mine. Um, there's some people that have, um, you know, that I don't know if it's, a, if it's, you know, just genetic or certain lines of dogs or certain crosses that they've made where they've had some kind of coyote a little bit there. You know, you get on to them and, you know, you might, you know, they might, they'll be, you'll be having to chase them down to get them off the chain. Uh, but I've never had any any issues at all with the line of dogs I'm breeding, you know, and they originated from Otis Weems' dogs. Yeah. And I'm, I've kind of got, I mean, that's what my, my whole yard's full of that, you know, that's, that's how I've bred. So, and they, 
they're good natured. Like they, I mean, they, they, they're not, they come to you. They, you know, they might, might have, they might be lacking manners, you know, they'll jump up on you every now and then, well, but they're not, they're definitely not like shy dogs. Yeah. By no means. And they, mm. and they, you know, when I whoop them, if I got to whoop them, you know, for anything, like they do, they get into something, they do something, they jump up on me when I'm feeding. They don't, they, they, yeah. they, 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 they're, 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 uh, Short, I call it short-term memory loss. They they forgot about it in two seconds, and they're right back to doing the next dumb thing. Yeah. Well, I think that just stems from, you know, most of these dogs are coddled a lot. And mine jump up on us because my wife, you know, 80% yeah. of the time she thinks that's great. And then yeah. 20% of the time she's like, I can't believe it, dog's jumping on me. And I'm like, well, yeah, five days this week, you pat on your belly and want him to jump up on you. <laughs> yeah. And then today you just don't want him to. And now all of a sudden it's the worst thing in the world. So, you know, (laughs) you can't, you can't create a habit and then expect them to know when and when and where you can't do that. You know, well, well, there's one Uh, thing about it. Even dogs can't decide what women want. (laughs) You ain't never said it better. You ain't never said it better than that. Even dogs don't know what women want. So a lot of truth in that. We're coming down to the end of it. I've got about all the questions I know to ask. I mean, is there anything about these pen? Oh, one question I want to ask: Where can I? Where can people find? I guess rules, uh, events such as that. That's not familiar with it. Um, I believe the the website hogband dot com. They have a list of rules. Here's what I hate about rules. Now, for anybody on the outside that, like, you know, that doesn't know anything about hog baying, they need to look at those rules and kind of understand something. But as perfectly written as our Constitution is, we still got one side of people that read something and interpret it completely different than how it was meant. And that, yeah. that, that document was written as perfectly as our forefathers could do it. And yet people will try to twist the, they, they, they read it in a, in a way that the, the, oh, well, they'll sit there and like, for example, we have debates from time to time, hogs sitting still and he breaks and runs across the pen. Well, that's a mistake. Well, no, it's not. It's not a mistake. Well, they, they, they didn't maintain control. That hog broke and ran. They were chasing him. <laughs> <laughs> what you know, I mean, I mean uh, that hog is a wild hog. You think just because it don't it don't ha- it don't have anything to do with the pressure of the dog. Sometimes that hog's gonna move no matter what you do. So, and sometimes it could be because somebody up in the stands walked across and that hog looked up there and he felt pressured and he took off. And you want me to dock a dog for somebody else breaking your bay? It has nothing to do with your dogs doing anything wrong. <laughs> You know, I mean, it's, it has, so, so as, as, like I said, anytime somebody goes out there and reads a set of rules, those are things that, you know, like people that we compete with. Uh, they, pa- that, pause. Most, I've got a question before we get off of this. Is it a, like an unwritten rule to where if a dog's baying in a corner, you're not supposed to get up and walk to try to make the, the whole move? Is that something well, that, that's a general yeah, rule that or I mean, idea that most people don't know? Just sportsmanship, you know, like especially if it's but but nowadays we've attracted such a I mean we got an audience now, you know, we, we're yeah. we're growing an audience. And these people don't know any they don't they don't know that there's twenty thousand dollars on the line here. <laughs> Nor well, do they care. Well, They're there to have a good time and watch dogs. I'd have never and thought again, about it. I'd if I had to go to the concession stand or get a drink, and the dog, yeah. uh, the hogs bayed right below me, and I wouldn't have known. Yeah. you know that's not something that I would have known. Yeah, and and we're not like, you know, what I'm saying. I mean, there's nothing you can do. I mean, there's people going to be up moving, but the judges can't sit there and say, "Oh, well, th- th- did the dog overpressure that hog? Is that why he broke?" So, in other words, in order. If a hog is stationary, he's sitting still, and he's at bay, the rule is the dogs cannot touch that hog. It doesn't matter how tight they – they can bay as tight as they want to as long as they don't touch it. Now, if that hog looks 
in a different direction. Let's say he looks over at the stands because he sees people moving and he takes his eyes off them dogs. Well, that, that hog is not a bait hog anymore. He's not paying attention. It doesn't matter if his feet are sitting still. He is, he is, his attention is somewhere else and it's not on the dogs. Yep. At that point in time, them dogs are free game to do whatever. They can, if they, if they, if they, if they they're, 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 all they're looking at is the, the dog, from the dog's point of view, he's like, Hey, this hog's fixing to go somewhere. He ain't looking at us. Look at him. Yeah. You know, so th- they'll go ahead and grab him and get their, get his attention and, and, and draw him back to, to the fact that, Hey man, we're baying you. You got to pay attention to me. And that's so, so like, that's part of the rule. You know, you can't touch a hog that's sitting still. Well, how do we word it as to where if that hog is not just because he's sitting still, it doesn't mean he's baited if he's not paying attention to the dogs. Yeah. So, like, you know, that, that, that's what I'm saying. You're going to have people that are going to say, oh, no, that should be a mistake. No, it's not. It's not a mistake. If you know anything about the sport, you know it's not. And if you're competing, you know, and, you you know, I, I hear people all the time, oh, I've been doing this for 30-something years. I got – I'm like, well, I've been doing it for five, and I'm, a, <laughs> I'm in our, our seven now. You know, I've, I've been doing it for seven years. The last four years, I've been on top. I guess you've been banging your head against a tree for 30 years. <laughs> you can't figure out how to beat me, you know, and, and I, and, and I, I judge a lot of events too. So I, I think that when I judge it, I can explain it and the handlers understand like, okay. And then they're like, well, but do we do that? Every, do they do that every time? Well, you got three different people with three different opinions. So you're not going to get it perfect every time. It's just not going to happen. You know, you got three judges up there. And they all might see things different. Yeah. So, so it, you know, it, it's just, it, it's like I said, it's a judgment call and, and, and there's human error. So things don't always, things don't always work out. It know? sounds like a, a tricky set of rules to write. I know you have to have rules and you have to have standards right. to judge a dog on, but it kind of seems like every scenario yeah. is kind of different. We got great judges involved in the sport uh, that's been doing it, you know, countless years and they do they do a good they do a a great job but even the three best judges in the world are sometimes going to get it wrong that's just something and there's part of it's part of you know that's part of i've taken i've taken a lot of bad calls i've I've taken some calls that could have went bad and went my way it's part of the sport and in order to 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 thrive and to grow, you got to come together on that. And you got to understand that, hey, these are all people, you know. Uh, I've got a lot of faith in the guys that's running this event and the judges. They're not out there. To, they, they, don't, they, don't, they don't care one bit who wins or loses. They're not out to screw anybody. They're not going to cheat anybody. I have never been cheated in the sport of hall band. Have they got it wrong and it cost me? Absolutely. Absolutely. It happens all the time, but yeah. it, there's a difference between, you know, like I always say there's a there, the intent is, it was what matters. It's not about right or wrong, you know, or whether they got it right or they got it wrong. They, they did the right. I mean, they did, they're doing the right thing. And more times than most of the judges do get it right. Yeah. Well, that in that on that, which I'm going off topic, but the competition side, I don't care what, what you're doing. Always or not always, a lot of times the best dog that day might not win just because they missed something or several mm-hmm. somethings that a dog that ended up winning did wrong, yeah. but they find the one mistake that the dog had done the least wrong, but they saw that. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. So, and a lot of, a lot, a lot of the, the, I mean, I feel like some of the bad calls that I have gotten, or my, or my fault. I've I've drawn enough attention to to the to Goose. Obviously, this is how you found me. I draw the attention. You think for a minute, them when he, no matter how tired them judges are, at four o'clock in the morning, when Goose walks in the pen, they're gonna watch him. You know, yeah. he's he's exciting. They want to watch him, so they're gonna they're gonna see more stuff. If, if he may, if he has a slight bobble, if it's just a little sloppy, he may not even make a mistake. But he did it sloppy this time. He gets deducted. Yeah. And yet, and yet, you know, uh, 
you'll, you know, it's just, there's, there's, that's just part of it, man. I, like, I don't complain about it. I, I don't, it, it, you know, it just always, uh, I always went off of Michael Jordan's old statement that I heard when he, if you ever watched the, uh, the series, uh, mm-hmm. the last dance, uh, they talked about one time, uh, Michael Jordan drew a foul on Reggie Miller and, uh, uh, he did Reggie didn't even foul him. Like he didn't, he didn't foul him at all. And Jordan goes to the free throw line and he rimmed out and missed the free throw. And he looked over at Reggie and smiled and said, ball don't lie. <laughs> yeah. That's it. <laughs> yeah. That's you know, it. I, I mean, goose, goose might not win every event, might not get first place, but he's consistently at that top because he's just that good. Yeah. So, you know, he's, I mean, he's going to win more than he loses. And sometimes he's going to get a bad break. Well, I get the target on the back because, you know, I, I know that when I go to a squirrel dog competition, just because mm-hmm. I'm doing this podcast, and I'll go ahead and tell y'all, if y'all beat me, you really ain't done nothing special because I'm hunting a young dog and I'm newer to the yeah. competition side of it. But just because I'm capturing everybody's stories on a podcast, yeah. I'm going to have a huge crosshair on my back. But yeah. you know what? I guess it, somebody's got to beat somebody. So, yeah. I, I mean, that's that. I mean, I, I'll, I'll, I welcome, you know. I'm like, going to shake the hand I, if they beat me, and I'm going to shake their hand if, yeah. they, if I lose. Right. And, or and, win and or whatever. I, I welcome it. Like, I, I, I didn't start a TikTok knowing or a Facebook about my dog knowing that the, the better he gets, the more criticism he's going to take. And I get, I, I mean, I, I get piles of it. I mean, just go, go, go read his comments on TikTok from time to time or on Facebook. You know, uh, they'll, they'll call him a show dog. He's, he's just a, you know, he's just an arena dog. I'm like, huh. I was like, you know, I, I like the, the comparison to the, to the, to the horses. Like, do you think those world champion roping horses that you see in the arenas that they're in the PBR and the you know, NFR, the PRCA, do you think for a minute, that those horses go out and work cattle on the ranch and when they're no. at home, they, they, they're not, it's a different, it's a different deal. And like, but, but the thing that kills me about like rodeo is that like real ranch cowboys, real guys that work those ranches on the cowboys, they reverend the JB Moonies, the rodeo guys, they reverend them like gods. They look yep. up to them and, and they, they show up and they fill up the grandstands and they are packed in there. And that is why that support that sport has survived for hundreds of years. Well, they they and, they team up together and they support each other, hundred yeah. percent. And and here's the other side of that. While we're talking about it, people that are roping calves, you can't put a video of your dog baying a hog on TikTok, but they can. But they got. But they can. Ha- well, I shouldn't say. But by gosh, yeah. they they can have a horse chasing a cow at 25 mile an hour and when he ropes it and that, that <laughs> horse sits back and he's got to dial it around that saddle horn yeah. and it that jerks that cow's head off well that yeah. can be on I mean, national tv no, no doubt no doubt that's what i'm like i it, it, it cracks me up but the reason is is they have they have wrangler they have ford truck they have big sponsors. They have corporate TV. You know, we don't have that in hog in, in any dog sport. There's nothing that has anything like that. And yet, we're out here cutting, you know, cutting each other in the cutting each other's throat when we should be, we should we, we should all be coming together. If we ever want this deal to get bigger than what it is, yep. we have to come together because you cannot sit there and have it. You can't have both ways. You know, our enemies have signed a blood oath. They don't care whether their other enemies right or wrong, wrong or right or wrong or not. Yep. They've signed a blood oath, and yet here we are cutting each other. Well, and, and I've said this several times. Our podcast is about growing the community and trying to get awareness out there. So, if the guys in the squirrel dog community, obviously, I would say ninety five percent of them's never heard of or never been in or around a bay pen for hogs, yeah. but it, it just blows my mind at how they can make us all argue with each other. For instance, Woods Hunters yeah. and Bay Pen. But, and I'm going to find Facebook groups for hog hunting. And I'm posting this on there. And I hope that these guys make it to here. Because if 
if we fight amongst ourselves long enough, we won't notice them taking our rights away from us. They take they take one every day. And and you know what? If they're like, well, that ain't that bay pan ain't good. Uh, let's get rid of that and only have woods hunting. Well, if I get rid of the bay pen, then that's less people from to get it out of the woods. <laughs> yeah, the dogs have came so far over the last, like since since you know Jake Lucano started hogband.com, the 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 competition has. I mean, every year it's harder and harder. The, there's more and more great dogs because, I mean, like, you know, like you said, and they're taking away hog hunting from us, hog hunting in the woods from us on a daily. You cannot hardly go get on a deer lease in Texas that will allow hog dogs. You know why? Because the hunters complained about hunting. Yep. <laughs> yep. We, we cut our own, we cut ourselves because they won't, they won't, they want to sit up in a freaking, you know, in a deer stand and shoot one because, and and I'm like those dogs, even if they do run a deer, that deer's right back. (laughs) You're not going to run them deer off. Now that being said, you come Northeast Mississippi, we're going to put a pack of walkers on a white tail and we're going to smoke it. But now (laughs) we own our land and you know, we're, we're, we're doing it legally. So, but right. Right. But squirrel dogs, squirrel hunters don't want their, squirrel dog chasing deer rabbit dogs rabbit people don't want their rabbit dogs chasing deer and i'm sure it's the same with hogs hog dogs you know so so if we could get along as a community and if if baying pan hogs is not your thing you know what at least support the right for the person to do it because this world's full of naked negativity no i mean and what what a lot of people, like I wish these people would see, would understand how common we really all are. You know, I, I mean, you know, we're all fighting amongst ourselves on social media and, and, and you know, amongst, but yet we're, we really are all, we all for the same thing and yet we're fighting. Well, well they'll go and sit around the coffee table in the morning after they get done hunting and say, man, yeah. do you see old, old Jesse grab that hog? Yeah, you see them baying it. There, everybody likes good dog work. That's the reason we're on a dog hunting podcast. That's right. So, so it don't matter what they're hunting. If we would support each other's right and yeah. just enjoy watching good dogs, and a lot of it stemmed from jealousy, you know. Oh yeah, yes, I'm sure there's a lot of people in the bay pinning world that don't like a guy that's only been doing it seven years and winning four, three or four world championships. Uh, uh, yeah, you're, you're, you. I get a. I mean, I'm, I think the culture's changing, you know, uh, how I think some people realize that, you know, I've been there, I may not have been there as long as they have, but I worked every bit of as hard as they did, you know, uh, and I, the bottom line is I got lucky. Uh, I, I can't stress enough that, I mean, it's not, I got Goose came on. The only thing I did, the only thing I did was I recognized his talent. Everything else you see that dog doing, he was born with. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. Well, he did that. I heard the comment. Somebody, you know, was talking about basketball. I guess, you know, they, who do you want to be? And I heard somebody say that, you know, I want to be Michael Jordan. They said, well, somebody's gonna have to be better than Michael Jordan. Won't you be that person? So I mean, at that time, Goose apparently is, is the man on the block but at some point somebody's got to be the bigger man so yeah know. i mean i always uh i always uh you know i don't know one of my tiktoks you know it's uh it's got that voiceover and uh it was, it was the weightlifter and uh you know he's like he said you know mama always said that somewhere somebody is going to be better than you and he said, huh, "Not me." <laughs> I saw. Not it. me. I, I like it too. I, I, well, he said, not me, you, Mama. You, somebody's got to be the baddest. You and seem <laughs> like the kind of person that I'd like to hang out with because you like to cut up and yeah. And it, and and it seems like these things are a lot of fun. So back to my original question, I guess we got on a little bit of a tangent, but the sure. rules you can find at hogbang dot com. Where do you find the events at? If somebody that don't have a clue, but you know what? I live in Louisiana and I'd like to go and check one out. 
Hogbane.com. All, all of it's at hogbane.com. That'll have, like, so so if it's not the website, there's a Facebook page and a group. There's a group and there's a page, hogbane.com. And you can you can get the flyer. The flyer's already out next show, October the 6th through the 9th, Downsville, Louisiana. It's the final show for the World Championship Series this year. Uh, we got uh, Jay Bergeron, uh, rodeo announcer, like – I'm not sure exactly what the acronym is, like the LRPAC, whatever that it, announcer yep. of the year. So, I mean, like Jay came up, came to Uncle Earl's, and I, I don't, I don't, man, I don't know what it takes to do that job being a, a like a rodeo announcer. But there is absolutely not a single person that could do the job he does better than him. Like he is, he is, he is the goose for 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 rodeo announcing. Like he. <laughs> It, I mean, like he knows he, now. He pays attention to the dogs. He knows the dogs. He knows how to talk about. Them. He can he can tell you a list of accolades that these dogs have done. I mean, he is amazing at his job, and he brings a whole new level of entertainment to the show. Having a guy like that, well, on that stage. The, you know, that's as much of the show as the dogs. I mean, in a, those people get overlooked. I know this is not a commentator or announcer podcast, but credit needs to be given because I, how how long are these contests or their, their competitions or whatever you want to call it well they're they're you know it'll, this one'll start on thursday and we end on sunday so it's all day all day i mean it's pretty all tough day. to do commentary for an hour or two you dang right much and less you, you know and, and cutting up and keeping the crowd interested and talking about dogs and everything else so yeah and he's got a he's got a good playlist, a good music. Everybody's cutting up, having a good time. And man, it's, it's a it's a type of event you bring the kids. I mean, there's kids running around everywhere. Wow. Well, you, you know, it, you, you can it, you know, I mean, you you have the ability to be an adult. You you have your kids there. Everybody's having fun. It's not it's not an event. Well, I better leave the kids at home. Let, let me I'm ask this them. question: At these events, do do they keep the the contestants or? handlers or whatever you want to call it do they keep y'all behind rope or is it if somebody comes up and like man there's randy i'd like to talk to him for a second no uh, hey, i'm a i'm i'm, a, I'm accessible 24 7 i didn't know if maybe if for instance if i brought my wife and my kids and my kids was wanting to look at the dogs if they was kind of t- lead i know obviously you don't want a bunch of people touching your dog but is there a place that people can look at them and man i let everybody come over and take pictures with him i'll have you'll have I mean, there'll be people coming to this event. And they'll be, I'll walk back to, I'll, I'll be up in the stands watching some runs. I'll walk back to my camper and there'll be a group of people standing around, you know, looking at goose from the side. Like, hey man, can we take our picture? And I'm absolutely, we'll sit there and take pictures. Uh, I mean, I can't tell you how many pictures I take in an event, you know, that, that goose takes. I don't take them. But, <laughs> but goose is taking pictures all the time. Like, and he loves it. I, I, I mean, he he really does. He loves the attention. Like, I truly believe that dog knows he's great. As, as hard as I, as hard as that is for me to explain to people, I really believe he knows. Yeah. Well, you know? it sounds to me like you need to uh, get that dog insurance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For the people that's curious about I'll, I'll, it, look, it's on the I'll Mark Morrison podcast, it. and it's called uh, More Foster or something Kennel Pro. They're out of Pennsylvania, so check them out on the internet if you want dog insurance. More foster? I've yes, looked sir. at some and what and what I understand is it's like you gotta pay like like your monthly bill is like ten percent of the value of your insurance policy. So if I want a ten a hundred thousand dollar insurance policy on a dog, I'm looking at a thousand dollars a month. Wow. <laughs> well, I asked him if he could remember. And he told me, which don't don't quote this, but I want to yeah. say he told me he had ten or twelve thousand dollars on a dog, and it was like three hundred a year. Yeah, that makes that that a year that would be great. I mean, if it was a thousand dollars a year for me to have a hundred thousand dollar policy, I'd in a heartbeat. I'd probably up, I'd probably up it to yeah. Well, you know, more you a know? dog like that. Yeah, yeah, and, it, and I, I mean, I've had you know, I've had I've had good offers you know, to buy the dog. 160 is a, a pretty salty offer. I mean, that's a house. Uh, 
yeah, I mean, you're right. I, it's, it's not, I mean, like, I, and I, I look at the guy I'm like, look, man, I, <laughs> this is what I love. Here's my problem. This is what I love doing. Okay. And I raised him and I said, in order for me to sell him, you would have to change my life. $160,000. Yeah. I, I do. I, I work. I mean, I work for Exxon. I make a good living. I don't, I'm not hurting for money, but I mean, I, I mean, I love my extra 160 grand, but I said, like, you, in order for me to do this, you have to change my life and 160,000 don't change my life. It pays off some bills. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. it don't change my life. I still have to wake up and go to work the next day. However, if we're talking like four or 5 million, you're changing my life. I can retire and <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. if you're dumb enough to give me four or five million dollars for a dog then hey well <laughs> well here we are. the deal is is you you enjoy the sport love the sport whatever you want to term it i mean if somebody's willing to give that much money the odds of finding another one of them are about it's a once in a lifetime dog so if, unless you're just tired of doing it i mean there's no yeah. sense in giving up the best dog and trying to go find something else to compete with something you already have. Yeah. And and I mean, what he's meant to me and what he's done and the things, I mean, what he, it's, it's just, there's too much in that, you know? I mean, if that dog, I mean, let's just say hypothetically he gets an injury or some sort that he can no longer do this and it happens tomorrow. And that guy comes up and still offers me 160000 The answer will still be no, because, I mean, I want to, I mean, that's the dog. I want to bury him on the hill with, with, the, with the rest of my dogs, you know, he, that's, that's who I, that's who he is to me. Well, so, he made you legacy. It made me like he made himself legacy. Well, well. I, I, I wrote an article for Tusker's magazine and my mom, you know, she, she read the article. She said, son, uh, Nowhere in that article is, has your name. I looked at her. I said, "Does it have Goose's name?" She said, "Yeah." I said, "All right, <laughs> I'm good with it." <laughs> well, I don't. I, nobody has to know my name I, as long as they know who he is. But I'm know? saying, I guess where I'm going with that is, is, and I'm not in the, I guess in the the hog bang world. Obviously, if you've listened this long, you understand that. Uh-huh. But. I went off of that TikTok and started trying to figure out how to get a hold of you and happened to find, I messaged hogbane.com and they That's, told yeah. me that Top Gun Kennels or Goose, type in Goose on Facebook or something. And I, I, I messaged the Goose page and then you was like, yeah. yeah, I've got a page, a face personal Facebook. But I guess you're known yeah. around the Hogbane world, but... And you would still, I guess, to an extent, be known because you sound like a card and like you cut up and have a good time and, and real yeah. sociable. But in the winning aspect, if you didn't have a goose and you just had a mediocre dog, your legacy is probably not going to be written like it is. No, I mean, when when I first started going to hog bands, uh, you know, there was that that's where I started hearing these are weans bred dogs, weans bred dogs. It was weans, 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 weans. That's all I heard. And all these dogs, all the great dogs that I, they're the ones that I liked to watch. They were all weans bred. Well, one day I go to Uncle Earl's and I'm sitting there talking to John Harrison who had the dog. He actually got these dogs from Otis Weems. Well, sure enough, I'm standing there just talking and this man comes walking by and his wife and uh they're looking in the at john's dogs i'm standing there with john and then john and him start talking and then i have no idea who this guy is and then uh uh my my buddy justin hilburn walks over and says there's otis and i'm like that's otis wings he's like yeah and i mean i was i was like starstruck it was like i saw george Strait, you know <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm sitting there like this is you know and and Man, it was, uh, you know, that was probably in 2015. By 2019, Goose had made this big name for himself on the internet. Otis's wife had actually messaged me, and she was asking me about the breeding, and I told her, I said, well, it goes back to your dogs, you know, and blah, blah, blah. We had this conversation. Well, sure enough, I get to Earl's, 
in 2019 and Otis and his wife were there to watch Goose. And I mean, like, this is the guy that I idolized. Now he's coming to, I, I felt it was, I don't know. It was one of those things where I was like, man, I felt like, I felt like I made it, you know, yeah. like I made it. <laughs> I, I get it. And, and there's people in the squirrel dog world, I guess I see winning and it, it is, but at the same time, I mean, they print their bridges on just like you do. Yeah. It, but they I'm worked no hard to get there. And, and and every now and then, like, I'll have that, that somebody walks up to the, to one of the shows and they're looking at Goose and, like, this is the dog they've been seeing all over the internet. And now they're standing face to face and they kind of, and, and I, and I kind of get it now. I'm like, man, I was that guy too. <laughs> you know, I was, I, I was <laughs> that way, you know, I, and I, it, but I appreciate it so much because that's what I wanted for him. You know, that's what I wanted for that dog was that, you know, it, it, it's, I'm just, I'm just happy he's, he's there. I, I, I want, I want him to be, I want it to, I want it to get bigger. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how to do that. You know, I really don't. Well, I, that's that's why I take all these opportunities I can that, that, you know, I've been on several podcasts and talked to people and yeah. I just, I, I want, I, you know, I want one day to, 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 to walk into a Walmart and uh, have a Walt Disney movie with Goose on it, you know. I would love to see that, you know. I'd love to get it to there, but I don't know how to do that, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, if, if you don't promote, then it's ne- if we're not trying, it's never going to grow. That's right. You I'm, I'm going to put, put forth my best effort and – just and pray, you know, cause yeah. that's all we can do at this point. For sure. Now we, we said the hogbang.com. You have uh, a hogbang Facebook group also and a hogbang yes. page. Is yeah, and there... I share the flyer. Like if you go to goose, you're going to see the flyer. Cause if you go to goose's page, I post the flyer. I share the flyer. I'm trying to invite as many people as possible too. So, so it's not like every other sport where there's 55 Facebook groups. Like, is that Hogbane Facebook? Yeah, that's the group. That group that's is the, the biggest that, one. That's the group. That's the group for like. There's there's a lot of information on that group. Yeah. Um, uh, I post. I typically share anything like flyers, whatnot. And if you want to see competition and video, good video footage of dogs playing, you're gonna have to go to my page. Okay. Because they don't. I mean, I'm not saying that there's not something on there, but there's definitely not a full. Hang on. You're saying Goose's page or Randy, yeah. Randy's Goose's page? page? Goose's okay. page. Okay. All right. I don't post a lot to my personal. I, every now and then I do, but it's not a lot. Well, I didn't know, you know, you probably don't want 5 billion people or 5, you know, however many yeah, people are adding only, you on Facebook. Go to Goose's You can page. only have so many Facebook yeah. friends, but you can have like a, you can have a, I mean, millions of followers on on the on the goose page so Yo. that's that's kind of i kind of keep it over i keep most of the stuff his stuff over there okay. most of the hog band stuff over there but wow. uh yeah i'm, I'm always available I, I answer i answer my phone uh i respond to messages um if i haven't responded to a message it's because i got sidetracked and i'm very add so, no. <laughs> I, like, I'm sitting there thinking, I say that, and I'm like, I hope I, somebody hasn't messaged me a question, and I didn't ever respond. <laughs> <laughs> I've got great, you're going to say you you respond to every message, and then there's going to be 55 people come on there and comment, you ain't re- messaged me. Yeah, yeah, I'll get it, but I'll get around to them, I, and I, I, I typically try to comment, like, what aggravates me is I catch myself, I catch myself like commenting more to the negative crap than I do all the positive. Like I'll have, I'll have a post and it'll have, a, it'll have 500 comments and 496 of them are positive. But the four <laughs> negative ones, I'm over there smarting off something back. Like I get these people. Like, I don't know why I do that. I think it's just human nature. I don't know what it is. I, I, but, I, I feel you. I, I, I guess a little side story is I have a, a YouTube channel. And I put yeah. deer hunting and deer dog races and, and squirrel yeah. hunting and this and that. Well, I don't make anything off of that. So it's more or less, if I happen to get enough that I deem good content, then I'll yeah. spend three or four hours putting a 20 something minute video together. Cause I try to have it, you know, just lighting and all that. I had some guy put on there this morning, need better camera work. I'm like, dude. I have got a GoPro. 
I'm, I don't have a full camera. You know, I don't have five men standing back here with a a, a speaker or a mic and all these cameras yeah. floating around behind me. I literally have to do all this myself and then put all this time into it. And then you want to get on there and put need better camera work. And, and, and a guy and a guy that has uh, 11 seconds of a thought. After yeah. You spent hours of, and he it, just ruined your whole day. Well, <laughs> it, 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 and I almost commented back and I said, you know what? They want me to comment back. I think. I think a lot of people troll on purpose just to try well, to get you to. Oh yeah, and I, and and now in the beginning, I, and a lot of it, I liked. I would comment back because if you comment to a negative comment, they're going to comment back. They're going to. And the more comments back. boost more your comments, numbers. The more comments and the more views, and that, exactly. So the controversy, I, I kind of I feed to it a little bit too. I play in. I play with it. You know. Uh, because it, it does work. I mean, I've seen it work, you know, in multiple videos where the more comments, the more views, the more, you know, the, the, you know, and then it's just, you know, it, it's the more you, the more people that see it, the more people that see it. And it just feeds yeah. one, one comment feeds the next. So it does work in some ways, but, uh, you know, some people always <laughs> like, why you waste your time doing it? I'm like, man, I'm, <laughs> I'm wasting his time. I mean, like, yeah, I've done, I've done this for attention. It's it's playing into everything I need it to, you know. Well, I will so, say this: it it makes me the, the podcast and the YouTube videos and all that. It makes me have appreciation for the people that do it because it is a lot of time and a lot of effort. Well, well, for instance, oh, yeah. me and you've been on the phone two hours. That's two hours out of yeah, your day, but then I'm going to have to go back and like edit. It's just been a, a thirty minute conversation to me, but yeah. But this is what I do. I mean, this is what I love. It's my passion. Yeah, and I, I can, I can, I can go. I can probably go for another two hours, you know. <laughs> but, but not that I'm going to do that yeah. to you. But I'm just saying, in general, I mean, you know, when you, when you, when you love something, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not work, you know. It's I'm not with work you. To you, anymore, you know, and, and uh, it's been one of my goals, you know, uh, the, you know, like, like going back to what you were just saying, though. Uh, it, that 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 type of clapping back stuff it, that grows from everywhere. Like uh, like we have this sort of adversity. Like I was telling you, you know, earlier. I don't know if, we, if that was before we started recording, but you know, a guy spent one hundred sixty thousand dollars on. I'm mean, sorry, one hundred twenty thousand dollars on Goose's two dog partners to break apart. To, to to I mean, like this. These are his two best partners, the dogs he wins the most with in the two dog to break apart, just to bring him down. Like it was. <laughs> And, and, and I mean, there was nothing more satisfying than winning that event and the shootout, you know, with another partner. Oh yeah. I'm like, man, you know, I was like, it, th this dog's already lost crow. Now he's lost cowboys, lost max. He's lost every, you know, he's lost all of his partners. And then, you know, a, a good friend of mine, Michael Batten's like, man, I got derailed. I think he'll be good with it. I'm like, you know what? I think you're right. We try it. The first time we tried it, we ended up with a fifth place finish in the in May. I don't think we should have got fifth. I think I think we did better than that. But you know, like you said, things yeah. <laughs> things don't always work out right. Oh yeah. The, that I thought I told Michael, I said, Hey, don't worry about that. I said, They got us this time. But we're better than that. You know, we're gonna win the next one. Yeah. Sure enough, we went in there and won the big shootout, you know, about a twenty thousand dollar pot. It was nice. And, uh, that would be nice you know i love I, you know michael man i love that guy he stuck with me you know when i needed him you know he knew i was hurting he knew i you know i lost everything i had and i needed him and he man I, you know if goose wins this world championship this year, it's because of because of that guy you know well i would think and i might be completely wrong but i would think if dominant hits he's been that You'd be, have a lot of people trying to run with Goose. Is that incorrect? Well, it's yes and it's no. So, um, you got like, and 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 and, and, I, and believe me, I don't. I, these people, I don't fault. Like uh, Josh Aswell, for instance, he's got a dog named Rango. I love to run with Rango. Josh is loyal to his people and there's nothing wrong with being loyal to your people he's gonna run his dog with joey's dog and he's gonna run his dog with lynn's dog 
and that's who he's running with. And it, it, he don't care that I've got the, the – it, it doesn't matter to him what I got. That's his people, and that's who he's running with. And now the, he's got good dogs, don't get me wrong. He's got good partners because Rango is one, Uncle Earl's two dog, two years in a row with that, with that, uh, you know, with this, with once with Earl and then once with Joker. I mean, well, that's a, respectable. That's respectable. You, yeah, you're right. That's honorable. Like, I don't have no problem with that. Yeah. I don't have, I don't, I mean, like, hey, there ain't nothing wrong with what, what he's doing. He ain't doing nothing wrong. But I, but I, but I'm not going to fail to ask him, hey, man, whenever, whenever you're ready to come on over to this side of the fence, let's get it, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's get yeah. it together. But, uh, you know, I mean, uh, you know, like, I, and, and another thing I was telling you too earlier, I, like I said, I don't know if we were recording, but a lot of these dogs don't do anything in the one dog. There's only, there's only like for, for three consecutive years, Goose has had a 30 plus, a 30 point season, a 30 plus point season. I think his worst season, he had 34. His best season, he had 47. Not another dog has ever scored 30. What, what would be a no, good dog score in a year? In or a season, year? a season, I mean, whatever you called it. Um, I can, I can. There's, a, I can only count on one hand how many dogs have made it to the twenties. So, so you know? 16, 17 is a, a what a good, good dog season oh, score is. Great, yeah. You're if you got sixteen or seventeen, you're in the top ten, top five. Okay, so if you win an event, so, what, what, how many points do you get? So, so let, let's say you win. Let's say if you win the one dog pro, you're going to get seven points. If you and then if you get second, you get six. If you get third, you get five. If you win the two dog pro, you get five points. And then it's four, three, two, one. So you have to hit first through fifth to get any points. You get you know five points is typically the max, except for the one dog. They give you seven away, and they did that a long time ago. I think it's something that probably isn't a problem but they've done it because there used to be dogs that would wouldn't run in the one dog save their dog for the two dog and there's still dogs that do that uh but you have to run twice in the one dog to even qualify so you don't have to score points in the one dog but goose has scored points in the one dog every year one dog and two dog he's never never went through a year in any of his world championship years without scoring points in both events so so there's hundreds of dogs at these events and only the top five get points yeah top five get points well so well it's that you gotta you gotta place in the money to to gain a point i i mean it's i didn't write the i didn't write the point system but yeah you gotta have a top five finish so you gotta be now like like for a two dog team if you get first both dogs get five points yeah you follow what i'm saying i'm with you first through first through fifth is getting points if you don't get first through fifth you ain't got any points. At the end of the year, there will be roughly about a hundred dogs that have scored points over various events. But there'll be a you know a bunch of them with just one or two points. And then the the top ten typically has more than than twelve points. You know that you know like twelve twelve to fifteen points is going to put you somewhere around tenth place. Oh. And then it'll be. You know, then it'll go up, you know, by one point all the way up to about I think the year Crow got second. Uh Crow had twenty four points. Mm. Goose Goose had thirty four. Well yeah. he Goose's had ten point first, lead. Yeah, Goose's first year when he won the world championship, his first year in twenty nineteen, uh he won the world championship and he had thirty seven points. His second year he had thirty four points last year 2021 he had 47 points so wow so th- there's there's only five shows to score points in only five shows to score points in <laughs> yeah and he had 47 that's a lot of winning oh wow i was thinking that y'all had a bunch of shows like i would yeah, i would it, figure it, y'all had 15 or 20 a year no we have we have five it, now, now, granted, there's other bands to go to. Don't, I mean, what division is this called? This is Showtime Pet Foods World Championship Series. You know Galen Cooper? Who? Galen Cooper. That sounds familiar. He works for Showtime. That's my buddy. No, the the the, the dog food company. Yes, sir. Out of, over in Georgia. Showtime Dog Food. Yeah. 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 
Galen Cooper is one of their reps in the southeast over here. Oh, okay. So, so GW Sons is over in Louisiana. Mm-hmm. The, him and and him and Jake just went to Georgia to tour the plant and and, and pick up a bunch of dog food. Yeah, I'm actually back. feeding it at this moment. Yeah, Showtime is is the best dog food for, uh, you know, for for a performance dog. Yeah, I really Great. like it. The problem I've got is is we can't find it in my area, so that's. That's a lot of people's problem. Now you're in Mississippi. Is yes, that right? sir. I, I know you was on a podcast with some guys that uh, was at B and B or what's their podcast? It's a whole kitchen, a whole dog podcast. Uh, Dixie Dogger. Dixie Dogger. D and D. That's Tuskers. it. D and D. Yeah, yeah. I was on Tuskers with that too at one time, and we uh, and, and and we talk about it a lot. They they talked about it a lot on the uh, Hog Dog Nation podcast. Yeah. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, I can, I can, I mean, we can, we can talk about that later. But I can, I can tell you, I can, I can lead you in the right spot to to have it. If it, if you can't get it at your feed store around there, yeah. Or we, I got, I got somebody that can get it to your feed store that's close by, or you can, you can, you can have it delivered straight to you. You know. I got you. Yeah, we'll but, talk uh, about that off the podcast. But I was just saying, no I, I think they have a real good dog food. Yeah, they do. So they do. They, they it's. It's great, great fuel for the dogs. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I, with with anything, you know, you always have criticism. And, well, uh, yeah. Well, I think but, any of the but, major Purina Pro Plan and and Extreme Dog Fuel Joy, they all their upper lines is tough to beat. But I mean, it's you know whatever your dog will eat and looks the best on. Know, I, I've never had a dog not eat it, but at the same time, I hear. You know, somebody, well, I tried it. My dog's got lots of, man, you probably had parasites. Yeah. And, and a lot of people don't realize it until they switch dog foods and, and the dog's gut gets a little upset. And the next thing you know, they can't gain the weight back because of parasites. Well, I'm, I'm just and, blown away by how many people don't know you're supposed to worm your dog every month. Oh, no doubt. And these people, and, and then they get offended when you tell them they got parasites. Oh, I don't have, I'm like everybody's got parasites. I promise you, I can walk out on my heel and I can find it. I mean, I wear mine every month and I still end yeah. up every now and then having to treat a dog, like go ahead and three day them in a row. And then because the, with, the, with the type of weather and the type of environment that, that these dogs, these working dogs are living in, they're going to get worms. Oh yeah. They're, well, they're going, I mean, that's just all there is to it. There's no getting around it. You just got to keep treating it. Yeah. And, there and, and some people just get so offended. They're like, Oh no, I take care of mine. I'm, like, I'm not saying you don't take care of your dog. I take care of mine too, but mine still get worms. Yeah. What are you using? You, know? you use Ivermec? I use Ivermec. I'll use, uh, I, I got uh, the Safeguard, the Fembendazole, and the Nemex. Yeah. Which is like a pyrantal, you know? There, there is uh, a, I'm, there, there's what? One, one worm that Ivermec won't treat, pen, or maybe two worms, pen worms or something. Yeah. But I went to this all wormer. And it's three different wormers mixed in one bottle, and you can get it at <laughs> Salvation Dog Supply or or wherever, so, and it's cheap. So what I've done is I got a bottle of Ivermec, I got a thirty-two ounce bottle of Pyrantel and a thirty-two ounce bottle of Fenbendazole, and then I take a ketchup bottle, and I mix the Fenbendazole and the Pyrantel about fifty-fifty, and then I take about ten cc's of Ivermec and I shoot it down in that bottle and I shake it up real good. And I just, it's a ketchup bottle, so I stick the syringe on the end of the ketchup bottle, yep. suck it out, give them about three cc's a month, and usually the, w w between the Ivermec and all the other stuff that's in there, it keeps them at bay. You don't, like, a lot of people overdo the Ivermec. Now, are you under skin or oily? It really don't take but like a quarter cc to kill those parasites, like heartworms, yeah. you know, for for example, but did you say you're giving so, it through through uh through the skin, or are you giving it orally? I just give it orally. Uh, yeah. I mean, I have given it under the skin. Uh, you know, if I, I mean, I, I mean, uh, any type of extreme case, you know, like I got bad worms, I'm gonna give them some under the skin, then I'll give them some in the mouth too. Yeah. Word of advice for the guys that don't know: if you're using Ivermec, that stuff will scald the dog's in my throat. You need to mix yeah. it with Gatorade or water or oh, tea yeah. or whatever. Yep. But it sure does. 
Boy, they'll hack and everything else. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'll I'll I'll, I'll usually mix it with like a Pedialyte or a water or anything. Well, yeah, really. I, I'm I was a Gatorade person until I switched to this other wormer, and it he seems to take it a lot better. I guess they've watered it down with the other three wormers that don't taste so bad. Yeah, and and that's why for the most part I just mix it with the with that that uh the pyranto and the in the in the safeguard you know and when you mix it with all that it's it, it don't it don't bother them knowing i got you dogs, dogs will take it we got it on a little bit of a rabbit hole so yeah <laughs> what well, is there anything else that we haven't covered about bay pen dogs that you think is worth talking about man no we covered about everything i can think of and i'm sure at some point I'm sure. I'm sure there's a lot of things I don't even remember that we have or haven't talked about. Yeah. Uh, if uh, if there's anything you know as a final farewell message, I'd like to get out there. It'd be October the sixth through the ninth in Downsville, Louisiana, four seventeen Lonnie Malone Road. If you've never been to a hog band, if you've never experienced anything like it. Give it, a, give it a shot. Just give it a try. You'll love it. The dogs are amazing athletes. No matter if you're a woods guy and you may not think you're into that kind of thing, man, I promise you you are. You just don't know it. You've only seen videos from the outside looking in. and That does not tell the whole story, nor does it give you a feel of how the event goes. I mean, there's a lot of guys that, that would tell you NASCAR ain't nothing but going in a circle, but if you go to the event, check it out, You'll fall in love with the sport. Yeah. And if there's anything I can tell you, it, it, you know, if you if you don't, it, it, just just give it a shot. Come out, try it out, check it out. If for anything, come watch Goose. You know, come 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 watch come watch. You know, come come for whatever reason you want to come. It's a good time. And I promise you, if you come, don't be mad at me when you got a kennel full of dogs. And you're and you're loading up uh, five, ta- five times a year, headed northbound to a hog band. You know, uh, you're gonna love it, and uh, it gives it gives it gives all these guys that do hunt in the woods an avenue, especially when you're running a place to hunt. You know, it, it gives us another avenue to be competitive, to have fun, and and uh, you know, bring fellowship and 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 support one another. I mean, this, this we got so many great people in this sport. I, I mean. You know, you you show up to the event, whether whether you win, lose, or draw, man, everybody's happy for you. You know, if you're if you're the winner, if you're the loser, they're patting you on the back. You know, oh yeah, uh, good group of people, and I suggest anybody that that wants an avenue to be competitive, come give us a try. Well, in worst case scenario, you get to know some of these guys, and it's not your cup of tea, and woods hunting still is. You yeah. you probably gonna get in a better line of dogs because some of these dogs that might not make it might make great woods dogs. Oh man, yeah, yeah. There's you know I can't tell you how many nine nine dogs have been bought that went to the woods and these people are just uh you know they're flabbergasted like man hey I get I get phone calls all the time you got any more puppies <laughs> <laughs> like, you know you got any, you got any more than bay pen calls yeah you know? I mean yeah. You know, it, it's not everybody's cup of tea, but the more connections you got in the the sport that yeah. you enjoy doing, man, it, it doesn't do anything, but, yeah, you know, it, yeah. it helps. For, for every hundred people that have showed up, 30 people have started buying dogs and started competing. That's how much it's like, you know. Anything you do, if you got a 30% increase, you're doing it right, you know. Oh, I know, for I sure. Know, I know. I know what these guys are doing. I know I know the guys at Hawkband dot com are working hard. They're doing it. They're doing they're doing their shows right and the sport has grown over like I said, I've been doing it for right at eight or nine seven, eight years now. And I cannot tell you how far it's came since the beginning. I mean, we went from seventeen dogs and the one dog to, you know, hundred and seventy. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Used to we compete and you'd be competing. There'd be about 17, 18 dogs compete with him and one dog. Now there's almost two hundred. And in and, 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 and Winfield there is two hundred. Yeah, you know? so I'm just saying. I mean, it's it's grown so much. And if 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 it wasn't that interesting, it wouldn't grow the way it is. So oh for I, sure. 
you know, I, I love for people to come out and just give it a shot. Just check it out. If anything, you're going to have a good time. Hey, it sounds like a, like a festival and, oh, yeah. and you get to watch a good dog work and you get to have a good time. So it's, I mean, I don't I, I don't even hog hunt, but it sounds like something I'd be interested in maybe attending. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. You mean you, you need to come and, and hell man, you find some other guys to do podcasts with you. I mean, no matter what, you're going to find some, some, some very knowledgeable guys that's been around the dog world for a long, long period of time. Yes, sir. And, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a dang good time. And I, like I said, I'd like to encourage everybody to come give us a shot. I got you. Well, Mr. Randy, I've had you on here over two hours, so I'm going to let yeah, you go do your thing hand. and, and I'm going to stay yeah, got, in contact. I got, dogs been, I got dogs barking at me right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm going to stay. I'm going to stay in contact with you because I'm going to try to get some more of these guys on here, you know, and, and get some of your suggestions. And I just want to keep up with you and Goose. So I appreciate you coming on and taking the time Absolutely. out of your I'd, day. I'd like to see you ought to come out in October and uh, see if he's crowned the world champion. Man, I, if, if I can break loose, I, I, I'm going to try. I'd love to see you. Man, I, I've enjoyed this and I really appreciate your time. Yes, sir. You too. I thank you. Thank you. You have a good one. You too. Right. Bye-bye.